why didn't we go to uh, why didn't we go to dinner? Because we're painting. We had to paint a fake house. But don't worry about that. The restaurant problem is there's too many options on the menu with specific names per the restaurant. L let me tell you something. So if I'm saying I want this uh, uh, cheeseburger. Oh, do you mean our house burger, deluxe, whatever? Look, I don't care what you call it. I don't care what TGI Fridays calls it. And I don't care what a place down the street calls it. I'm telling you I want a cheeseburger. You figure out the rest. I don't need to know the, the menu specifics and the, the, the little names you gave your burger. I just want a burger. If it's a salad, oh, you might have a Santa Fe whatever salad or the, the Caesar, you know, Romanian. Give me a salad. If I tell you I want a salad, just give me the salad. I'm not doing all this with you. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a little bit of a deep look into autopilot troubleshooting. Autopilot can be a very magical thing. Open the box, sign in, you get all your stuff. But how do we figure out when the, that stuff doesn't come down what we're looking for to troubleshoot? So that's what we're going to go over today. Well, again, this is where, you know, not to go on a rant, but that's where fast food comes out on top. It's numbers. Give me a number six. Give me a number three. Large, you know, but I, I don't need to learn all the, the little names and options. Get Rubik's. Solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so when we talk about troubleshooting autopilot, we have to understand what we're going for. And usually what we're just trying to do is get through the enrollment status page. And the enrollment status page, as you know, is this part right here. So I have a Windows 11 device going through it right now. And you know the drill, right? Device prep is doing the enrollment and doing the TPM attestation making sure the device gets into Intune. Device setup is where a lot of the meat will be, what we're waiting for, of course, you know, ultimately the applications. And what, and, you know, we skip account setup. Um, if you don't know why, just go look at some other videos. I talk about that like a million times. This is very bad and we skip it. So device setup, right, comes down to the enrollment status page, something else we've talked about quite a lot. So when I go to Windows enrollment, enrollment status page, this is what we have to get through to be successful. So my enrollment status page for this group of devices is set to hold the device in this state until the selected apps are complete. And I've chosen my autopilot branding package, the Azure monitor agent, company portal, Teams, and Notepad++. The enrollment status page is so important because that determines the end user experience, right? So as we've talked about in the past, we wanna keep that relatively I'll say clean, not so much minimal. Obviously, you, there are certain apps that need to be on there before the user can use the machine, but you really want to consider what's a critical app and what's not. Do I need Notepad++ before the user signs in, or is that something that can come down later in the background or I install with Company Portal? So we've talked about this in the past, but I like reiterating here because this can make or break your experience and ultimately make troubleshooting uh, a lot smoother if we're only looking at critical apps. Okay, so we're still waiting for the apps to get identified. While we're waiting for that, okay, it looks like it had zero of four coming down. Okay, but that's fine, right? It's gonna wait for only what's assigned to it, which is the beauty of Company Portal. If I don't get Notepad++, it's not gonna make me wait for it. Um, excellent, so if we go back and look, we see the app tracking is happening here, one out of four. And really quick, something I wanna touch on, and the reason we tend to not worry about these things so much is security policies are not tracking all your configuration profiles. That's a question I get asked quite a lot. Um, when we look at configuration, folks think it's gonna go through these. It's not going through those. So this is tracking uh, specific security things like firewall policy and settings. It's looking for any certificates we're pushing. Um, Windows Hello for Business is tracked in here as well. And of course, uh, network connections if we're pushing a Wi-Fi or an ethernet network. So one thing to note is before the apps actually start, it's also pushing PowerShell scripts and remediation right here. So be very careful what's assigned to the devices if it's anything that we think could disrupt the flow of enrollment status page. But so really all I have to do here is wait for the four to come through. Um, as far as troubleshooting from an Intune side, there's not a whole lot we can do. If I go to the devices themselves and search for that device, 
Here it is. It does have an Intune device already, but I'm probably not gonna get that much information out of it yet. If I go to Managed Apps, we can see the install status, right? So, um, Trojan Require Uninstall, Update. Nope. So I could see some of the things that are are waiting for there, right? Um, so it's not gonna give me anything real time. So as far as, as it's going through it, we're gonna leave it here and just let it do its thing. So before we can troubleshoot any of this, we have to understand what's actually happening here. And ultimately as a technician looking at this or as the end user, we don't know what's happening at this point. It's just telling us which apps are installing out of which apps. So how can we see what's happening in the process? So luckily there have been some great solutions for this, the latest being Get Autopilot Diagnostics Community. And just to touch on that briefly, so the original script came out in 2020 by no other than Michael Niehaus himself. And this was a great solution because it allowed us to run a script during the enrollment status page and see what's going on. As we went forward to Windows 11, there's ultimately been some issues. And uh, luckily, Andrew Taylor maintains the Get Autopilot Diagnostics community version of the solution and in which, you know, uh, Michael ultimately added some contributions to that as well. So still very active in there. And this is what we want. So we can install this in PowerShell while this is happening. So let's go ahead and do that because um, we're still waiting here and I'm getting antsy. Um, install. Uh, oh, we need PowerShell first. PowerShell. So we are going to install script, get uh, autopilot diagnostics community force. Okay, so with that there, we can run it. Get autopilot diagnostics community. And let's see where we're at. So giving us a lot of good information. So let's look up here. So it's giving us a lot of good information about the profile in general. We can see the tenant ID, the autopilot ID. Um, we can see all of our out of box settings. This is all coming from the autopilot profile. It's Azure ED join. And this is our enrollment status page settings. So down here, you know, what is actually set here to the ESP? So you can see uh, we have uh, the vendor DM client policy that always gets tracked. And these are the four apps it's waiting for. Uh, it's waiting for whatever that is, whatever that is, and these two apps, right? Downloading, installing, downloading, installing. So these are done, these are going. Um, and this is our cert, right? So it'll also track the cert that's coming down. So this is probably our uh, Cloud PKI cert. And here you have a timeline, right? The profile gets downloaded, the service connection points discovered for registration, MDM enrollment was completed. So we got way better uh, visuals to everything than we would have, you know, uh, without it. But take a look what happened. I did get an error. So I'm gonna run that again and see what's actually going on there. And hopefully this will show me. Okay, so you can see, uh, if you look at everything here, we got two of the apps, one failed, and it looks like one didn't even make it down, right? So how are we gonna figure this out? Yep, F7. F7. Okay, well, first of all, what do these mean, right? Um, now, these GUIDs line up to actual Intune apps. So if we were to take F7A0187, you know, and copy that down, if I want to uh, go to my apps, I can literally pick any app. It doesn't matter. I'm going to change this GUID all the way at the end of the URL to match the GUID we just copied and I can see Azure Monitor Agent was the problem here. Now, alternatively, you can run this with an online switch and you can sign in, right? If you have access, if you have the credentials for the tenant, which hopefully you do. And if you're signing in, the tool can actually convert those GUIDs for you. So you don't have to do what I just did and get the names of them. Okay, now what's gonna happen is it can convert those and give me the actual friendly names. Oh, okay, so now look at this. It's telling me Azure Monitor Agent failed. Microsoft Teams failed. Autopilot Branding. Um, so Autopilot Branding on Microsoft Teams, Azure Monitor. Uh, but it looks like we are missing an app. So let's see here. 
Oh, company portal was the other one. Um, and that looks like it installed, but for some reason wasn't tracked up here. Okay, so we got everything but that. Now, as far as the reason it failed, you can at least go troubleshoot your app. If we go back and look at Azure Monitor Agent, we can see I'm not having good luck here with this app. So uh, it's failing. And if it's failing for most folks in deployment, it's definitely not something we would want to include in the ESP. Uh, so this is a great way for you to actually see what's going on. Now, if we're curious about what's actually happening here in terms of where this information is coming from, we're gonna open the registry and I'm gonna take you on a short ride. So we're gonna go to HK Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Windows, um, Autopilot, enrollment status tracking, ESP tracking info. So if we look at this, oh, sorry, diagnostics and sidecar. Okay, so what you'll see here is basically a log of what's happening at different time intervals. And then when it's over, you get the last log in state. Uh, so let's take a look at what's actually happening here. So the first thing is, uh, we get the list of what should be tracked. And you can see very clearly here, those are the GUIDs that match what we're pushing from into. So they're all gonna have a value of one. Now, what does one mean? One means not installed. So one is kind of the starting state. It means you're supposed to have this app, I'm putting it here, you just, you don't have it yet. As we go through, everything should flip to a two, which is in progress, right? Um, now what happens sometimes, so in the case of this app, whichever one, FF58 is, I don't know, we've got to go look it up. Uh, actually, it should tell us here, uh, FF58. Let's see here. Yeah, that was the company portal. So the company portal installed very quickly and that's why it flipped to a three. So three is best case scenario, that's completed. The rest flipped to two at this point. So they're in progress, right? So if it's in, if it's in progress, it means it started installing. Okay, in the next step, we see uh, Company Portal is still completed. This app, AD292. So AD292 is Autopilot Branding. That completed in the second step. So now just the last two are in progress. And those two are the Azure Monitor Agent and Microsoft Teams. Finally, Microsoft Teams was installed successfully because it got the three but Azure Monitor Agent was still at a two. And then finally, uh, everything dropped off, but things started dropping off, but uh, Teams, uh, sorry, the Azure Monitor Agent, which hit a four. And four means we have an error. So that's where this is getting parsed from. And you can see it right there. So you can see basically what they're doing is they're querying the registry to see when this starts and when, uh, when you have the error. And then the last log state gives you, essentially this is the final the final outcome of it, right? Uh, you can see I had three out of four completed. Uh, I, my list was started and my list was retrieved, right? So those are both a one, just saying it returned it. So that's a pretty good way to see what's going on here. And of course, in my case, I know it's Azure Monitor Agent. So you can make the appropriate, you know, changes. So I might say, you know what, I need to, uh, I need to stop assigning this because it doesn't work. So I'm going to remove it. Uh, maybe I'll delete the assignment or at the very least, if I'm not really sure what's going on, I can at least remove it from the enrollment status page and say, look, don't hold up autopilot because of this problematic app. Uh, let's just go ahead and remove that from the list. Because remember, that doesn't mean assignment. That means if assigned, wait. So you can do several things. I don't know if that was fast enough, but you can always try again. And if it can go grab uh, the new one, it'll do it. If not, it's gonna error out again. No, it did. So a few things, you can reset the device and start again. Uh, obviously doing all this in testing means you mitigate this for the end user. Um, if you don't care so much, you could always do the continue anyway. That option will just let the user proceed. Probably not the best option because you don't know what they're, they could be continuing without your AV software or without some, you know, core business applications. So uh, probably not a great idea, but for testing purposes, it's good in case you want to get in and poke around. Autopilot's kind of like magic. 
right? User takes the device out of the box, signs in, it just works. The problem is, like any technology that looks like magic, it's hard to see what they're doing. It's hard to see what the trick is, right? So uh, having more knowledge about peeling this back is super helpful. And again, the goal is testing. If you're building your environment, if you have Intune set up and you're starting to de you know, deploy devices with autopilot, do a lot of these tests first, right? Make sure you're seeing consistency because it's very easy to troubleshoot when the device is in front of you and you can poke around like we just did, go get the PowerShell scripts, poke around in the registry. Once you start drop shipping devices to end users, your margin for error becomes very slim. So you wanna make sure you've hashed all these out before. And if you make a change to your autopilot configuration, make sure you're also testing that as well. So it's super important. User experience is king with autopilot. So we have to know how to troubleshoot. I'm gonna put links below to the uh, um, autopilot diagnostics community tool that we used here. And we'll be seeing you.